Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last years of Europe, in which we're playing as Reichs Commissariat of West Africa. If you'd like to read about their history, please go right ahead. We're led by a certain Wolfgang Schink. So, uh, we'll go down here, and he is a flyboy, fly, 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 and of course we're bordering with our nation. Uh, was it Central Africa, on Ost Africa, as well as the Union of South Africa? A lot of Africa here, but Vovats. Cool. Let's begin with the Eagle of Africa. The tribes of Reichskommissar of Sudwest Africa share a saying. When thunder strikes on a clear day, your ruler watches over you. Despite their superstition, their words bear kernels of truth. Reichskommissar Wolfgang Schenk, a veteran ace of the wars in Russia, lords over the largest concentration of Luftwaffe forces outside of the Reich proper. Each day, dozens of the numbers depart from the airships from what it was once Portuguese Angola to strike at the targets throughout West Africa. The man himself rules with a light, almost absent touch. While a competent administrator himself, Shank prefers to fly alone in his personal plane when he leaves his duties to his subordinates. No one knows where he goes to or what he does during his flights, but when he returns, he seems more serene than his usual cold, detached self. Nevertheless, the aviator has thus far fulfilled all of his duties to the Reich, ever ensuring that this faraway colony keeps faith to its nickname, the Air Empire. Rex Komasal Shank will join the Air Force as one of its lead 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 fighter pilots. He flies a specially modified Horton 249 jet attack fighter named Danal. He is a genius in ground support while also supporting the fighter pilots with tactics he has mastered over the African continent. And we have the National Spirits African uh, Airstrip. We also have Away in the Clouds, which kind of sucks for political power. <clears throat> With incoherent bookkeeping, we also have very low German displeasure, which looks really bad. We don't want to piss off the Germans then, or Germania. And if you would write, like to read about his bio, please go ahead. Boom. Very nice. Now let's take a look down here. I, I didn't try this off screen at all, so I don't know what's going to happen. We have academic base is getting worse. Research facilities, agriculture, poverty is getting worse. Industrial expertise, industrial expertise is getting worse as well. And equipment is okay. Army professionalism is staying the same. And uh, who do we have as generals? Hans Ulrich Rudel? Well, hmm. Adolf. Oh, last conquest? Oh, let's get a guy named Adolf, why not? But let's read about the next focus, too. Uh, air control, Sudwest Africa. Sudwest Africa is covered in airports, airships, and their adjacent facilities. Not only does the Reichs Commissar host the largest Luftwaffe air wing outside of the mainland Reich, it also serves as a main hub for air travel and trade from the rest of the world. Every day, hundreds of transporting cargo planes load and unload both passengers and goods coming from or heading towards the rest of Deutsch Africa. Fulfilling this extremely important duty requires burdensome expenses not only for the fuel, but also for maintaining both of our infrastructure and the salaries of thousands of technicians and mechanics that operate them. To this end, the Rex Commissar always emphasizes the importance of acquiring enough funds whenever and whenever and wherever possible. And we're not going to do one just yet. Give me one moment here, because we got to do some stuff here too. Um, there's hard mode, if you want to read about that, please go ahead, but we're not going to do hard mode because it's my first time doing this. Uh, I'd recommend... Uh, if you'd like to, reading about the African airship, because I already read it, so I kind of already know what's going to happen, but let old eagles fly. <clears throat> Few other than in the skies of Windhoek do birds of metal outnumber birds of flesh. <clears throat> One such metal bird outshines the rest for his desire to exchange his aluminum wings for real ones. How good it would feel to simply forget to live freely amongst the clouds. Today, like any other day, Wolfgang Schenk flies over his capital, looking to escape from the cage he'd built around his own soul. The veteran's ace experience with planes is such that he doesn't even need to look at the controls anymore, sadly. There are other things he needs to be careful about, monsters looking around him during the day. Worse ones await in his own mind, to ambush him as soon as he closes his eyes. Suddenly a loud noise wrenches him from his thoughts and dreams, sewing him back to reality. No, this isn't reality, it can't be. Enemy fighters inbound, prepare for interception, escort the bombers to their target, and sure they hit the enemy production plants. No, 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 no. They aren't factories, they're civilian houses. Shank to command. The target has no strategic value. Abort mission, command, answer, command, command. Wolfgang's own screams awaken from his delirium, and his mind sputters back to life. <clears throat> one by one, his fingers tear away from the cloche. He redirects his plane to the airstrip, the noise, the, the noise finally reminding him of his own humanity, and without fuel, his fake wings won't take him away. As he leaves the cockpit, Shank is immediately assailed by the monsters he tries so hard to repel. Advisors, bureaucrats, all sorts of people expecting duty from him. Duty, the mere words that make him sick, and so he nods when he needs to nod, signs what he needs to sign, until some bureaucrat brings him the latest report on housing projects for the natives. Already, thousands of Africans now live in actual homes, with more units to come. Rays of sunshine on his mind, soon blotted away by clouds that told of insufficient funds, so Wolfgang Schenk leaves the official for his now refueled plane, and he takes off from the earth once more. Shame keeps him from looking down another day forward. So for this one, basically, uh, we need more money. We need to get some transport planes, which is weird, but it makes perfect sense for us. So we can uh, get some more money. Germany will be displeased, though. Optimized flight schedules. Germany will be slightly displeased. We'll get some more money. And we'll get some more money, too. And we actually have the market here. So with the market, 
Um, our entire economy is nothing but a means to an end. Both the funds we receive from the Reich and the investments we get from the private companies are meant to improve Angola and prepare for its eventual independence, of course. If we manage to develop the colony through legal means, the high mat will only be too glad to increase our funding. Our money and raw materials will allow us to access the world's market and thence contracts with both German and foreign companies. By selling what we have and buying what we don't, we'll exp exponentially increase the rate Angola grows. Additionally, we'll unlock more opportunities for improvements as the region develops. Now, since the focus uh, time goes on, so we get extra PP right now, we get about 0.29 every day. Holy crap, that really sucks. Um, give us a few days, because I do want to get more civilian factories, so... Uh, this will cost us $3 million. Ooh, that's not good, but whatever. The Reich's ailing economy seeks desperately for untapped markets or labor pools to exploit. Soon as Africa has remained outside of their and most modern corporations' radar, but by letting them know of our existence, we might be able to convince them to set up subsidiaries here. For the Reich's glory, of course. Slightly pleased, and we like it when they're pleased. That's good. Um, actually... Uh... You know what? Hmm... They're not displeased, so we might as well choose this first. So they're not very displeased. So this one now is still very low German displeasure. Uh, let's go do this one first, actually. Let's do this one first. Just because I want to read through all these first. Buy steel from Germany. Sweet Best Africa's production facilities suffer from a crippling lack of industrial grade raw materials. To satisfy our arms factories' demands, will incentivize investors from the high metal supplies with steel. Um, I'll be honest here, like, this reminds me a lot of when I played uh, Central Africa with Müller. So <clears throat> I have a feeling this is all going to go away once the war starts or we get annexed. Soon as Africa's production facilities suffer from a crippling lack of industrial raw, industrial grade raw materials. To satisfy our airplane factories' demands, we will incentivize investors from the high mount to supplies with aluminum. And basically, it's all basically the same thing. Whether it's rubber, which we actually do need some rubber. We really do need rubber. Um, that one, of course, civilian factories. I don't mind doing some of the stuff. Our military industry can hardly keep up with the demands of both the garrison and Afrikaner Africana Luftwaffe. To ensure we can adequately supply our forces, we should supply lines from the mainland uh, get cut off. We must convince the Reich to open up new production plants in our cities. <clears throat> uh, for the glory of the Reich, of course. Oh no, this is that's for that one. Yeah, Jimmy, be silent, please. Yeah. All right, Sudwest Afrikanische Rundfunk AG's first broadcast. Horst Wessel lead blares from the TV as set a uh, set as a placard with words as to Ubertragung flashes on the screen. The placard fades as the song ends, replaced by South Africa's iconic bull sanga. Finally, the screen shows a handsome middle-aged man with his hands on a desk and his eyes at the camera. His friendly mien and immaculate two-piece suit speaks volumes of his trust as he clears his throat, homes across the Reichskommissariat, halt their chores, and wait for the broadcast first words. Good evening to all good citizens of the Reichskommissariat Sud West Africa. Today marks the first day of broadcasting for Sudwest Africa Kanesha Rundfunk AG, the Reichskommissariat's first native television broadcast service from our office here in Windhoek. We intend to bring you news and entertainment from both the Vaterland and with an uh, African abode. I'm Karl Heinz Kupke, and your host for the next hour, and we will begin our nightly schedule with local news. In the Wanda this morning, Reichskommissar Schenk attended its newest hospital opening ceremony, on Alla Schiffer Ausse. My money, one man's guy, I kind of like that. Decisions to expand SKL, allowing us to research and produce better planes will be available. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, pit stop for a better future. Uh, exploded airfields will be unlocked. I kind of want to see what that one does, though. Germany's Southern Airport. Years prior, I've already seen a steady increase in traffic within Sweetest African airspace. While this has dramatically increased the flow of goods and passengers into our many airports, our somewhat dated infrastructure is beginning to buckle from handling both heavier cargoes and increasingly clogged skies. To ensure that his airports can work at peak efficiency, Rex Gomesoff Shank will request more funds for the frequent and extensive repairs they now need. Surely the high met will never risk losing their precious fighters to faulty airstrips. Also, we're not producing anything here because we can't. Um, honestly, like, we got. I want more civvies. Thirty percent, and there's thirty percent down here too. Uh, we're gonna get a lot of roads. Do that there. Do that where there's rubber. Um, I, I kind of doubt we'll get this any of this stuff made. Yeah, we need we need those civvies now. Well, then again, I don't think we'll be able to get too many of them, but you never know. We have to send. Okay, so every period we have to send two point six million USD to Germany each collection period, but a matter of priorities. Wolfgang Schenk stares at the construction crews toiling under Africa's blazing sun as they flatten the earth in a long line. Another airstrip. As if there weren't enough already. Still, this one is closer to his compound, which means less time to travel to and from it. More time, in turn, spent flying far, far away from his troubles. An inch of relief worms into Schenk's features, then it flees when he sees the dark complexion of a chain gang of workers, each carrying a stack of heavy blocks against their thin, malnourished backs. Far too heavy for even an airy man's strength. For once, the usual bureaucrat demanding his attention is welcomed. More than more the better if it's a blab that keeps him from thinking of the suffering this land's people's uh, pe this land's people's endure every daily. 
every day. Rex Komasari says, what should we bring into the new hangars first? Well, without thought, Shank replies. We require mostly food stuff and medicines against malaria, but I'll have my order sent later. A bee passes before the bureaucrat responds. I'm deeply sorry, Rex Komasar, but I was talking about whether we should store the fuel for the bombers or the fighters. The silos can't hold food stuff or medicine. The fish was condensing, or condensing, condensing features feel like a slap, and the notion that he has almost slipped his plans as someone who can similarly ship him to a concentration camp turns Shank's guts into a vomit. So sorry, uh, Shank stutters. I, I was thinking of the measures we can take in preparation for a pandemic. S Secretar Bolm sent me an overview of our situation this morning. See, a beat he coughs. Anyway, we're housing bombers here so that fuel storage shall take precedence. His excuse sounds pathetic even to his own ears, but the bureaucrat seems to believe it. If he didn't, then the man didn't let his doubts show as Wolfgang turns back to the pole and it is only one thought occupies his mind. Wolfgang, you pathetic little man. Nice, let's get some civvies. Civvies for the country. And then, air traffic reduction? Uh, that's not bad. Lower the chance of future air accidents will occur. For some reason, that sounds like that. Ooh, lower expenses. That one might be really good. Air traffic reduction. Uh, besides increasing the quality of our, own, our runways, we can also work with the quality. New technologies for coordinating air traffic can reduce the time needed to execute all loading and unloading operations, as well as more quickly redirect loitering airplanes to empty airships instead of wasting precious fuel. The Rex Commissar will ask the Ministry for a, a Colonial Affairs for more funds this time to update our colonial our control infrastructure with both aforementioned new technologies and trained personnel. They may claim plane however they wish, but it's for the Reich's glory, then they must do it. A pit stop for a better future. Another day, another bombing raid. Valdemar Lorenzo had gotten used to seeing the bombers take off from the airstrip. All told, he was glad he was standing their frames instead of volunteering as a target practice for the peerless skill at turning the earth into heck. <clears throat> His job was easy, but it taken time for him to learn. Even simple mechanics seemed like arcane wizardry to a young al uh, analphabet Angolian. But instead of ending up in a slave mine, he had somehow been sent to work for the airbase ground crew. A stranger still, natives like him made up the entire crew. Sacrilege in many places in Ost Africa, more so. <clears throat> With pl without planes to attend, Valdemar busied himself with his hobby, staring at the shadows cast by the control tower as it began in short in the morning, then grew long into the afternoon. Noise tore him off his trance. Sure enough, a bomber landed, its cargo perhaps emptied onto an unlucky soul standing on top of the southern Sahara's crater-filled infernos. Its pilot left the cockpit tower, but as soon as he set his eyes on Valdemar and his colleagues, he barked orders with, with energy and vigor. What are you doing here? All doing there, the German spat. Stop loitering around or feel my, my bad we're playing. Immediately, the crew sprung towards aircraft. As they tended diligently, if a bit begrudgingly, at the silver beast, the pilot grumbled, Why did that softy allow such things? Letting Untermesh to do an Aryan's job. What did Shank think? It's a miracle our planes aren't falling apart. If only we had a stronger Rex Commissar, one like Kutig, there would be no disorder in this god for second land. Though the acrid word stung his soul as a hundred tiny needles, Valdemar ultimately did nothing. If the insults were the price for being able to feed his family without slaving in some camp, it was far too cheap. After fitting the plane with munitions and fuel, the Ang Angolan and his cruel crew made his way for the bomber replacement pilot. By the side, they watched as he and the large plane took off once again to wherever it meant to go. Shank's yoke is much lighter. <clears throat> Anything else here? No, up there, no. I have a feeling we're going to need more money. But they're just slightly displeased, so they're not very displeased still, so that's good. So that should be okay, right? And yeah, point to eight every single day. Jesus Christ, that's bad. Safety is paramount. With the increase in air traffic comes an equal and unprecedented increase in the risk of an accident. Should one happen in our borders, then we will be complicit in no less than a hundred deaths given that most passenger planes can now carry such numbers. To preclude this, we must always strive for both high efficiency and high safety in everything we do. Of course, updating the security protocols and outfitting their, with our planes with safety measures will require costly investments, which the mainland surely won't hesitate to grant us. Nice. And let's do it again, and boom. Cool, so we can get some more stuff here. We definitely could use rubber. because Actually, we could use a lot of things. Aluminum, rubber, tungsten, steel. Um, this is not looking good. Why do we need tanks? Do you guys have... You got, oh, you guys actually have tanks on them. Okay, well, I would, wasn't making tanks. We definitely need more millies. Um, mm, aluminum would be good as well. Buy steel. I mean, we need all this stuff. Uh, I like infrastructure, but that's okay. Slightly, please. Cost us $2 million. That's fine. <sighs> we can get... Oh, we're extracting two. We can get out of our deficit immediately. But rubber is for planes. Which we can honestly use. That's not too bad. Oh, oh, the game already put us two on there. Huh. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and buy some steel. Because steel is always super, super needed. Nice. 
Well, we'll get that done as soon as we can. Cool. Safety is paramount. And then we'll do rapid runways just so we can lower the cost of everything here. So, One Man Sky. I played that game when it first came out. Rapid runways. New advancements in airplane engines allow modern planes to depart from shorter runways. We can exploit this with updating or updated infrastructure and personnel, shortening takeoff times and increasing daily air traffic overall. We already have sent a preliminary proposal for our funds to the ministry in Germany. Now we await their answer. Investigating the books. The Portuguese were the final straw. Before that, the auditors were booked a hotel room with neither a ceiling fan nor air conditioning. That at least seemed part of the course for a crap hole colony. Conversely, the office they were furnished in, Windhoek, uh, dropped below zero degrees. Overcompensating, maybe, but what broke Lars and his assistant Klaus's patience were the workers in the financial department. Doddering old holdovers from the last colonial administration, Lucifer fool speaking worse German than a toddler to the last. With nothing done, Lars caught off a fact-finding mission as a bust. As the two walked through the Windhoek airport's main atrium, a messenger ran up to them. He pressed the letter into Lars' hands, bowed, and rushed out. At his front cover was stamped the Rex Commissar's seal of office. A bull sung on a blue... Escuchion, large salute to Dublin. Our sincerest apologies as to your rough treatment on this trip. We do hope you will return to Sweet West Africa soon. Rex Kumasar, Wolfgang Schenk. Lars and Klaus looked at each other, mouth cape. The audacity of that son of a... You won't get off so easy next time, Schenk. Our finest import. It's almost noon in Windhoek. Or Windhoek. And a small crowd is gathered in the stands. Vendors move about the stairs, selling refreshments. Those spectators who can't afford a seat in the rafters instead pack the field's edges. The front rows are taken up by various white residents, mostly Germans from the Windhoek Police Department who came as part of a Reichskommissar sponsored recreation program. The air buzzed with excited chatter over what will happen next. First, an announcer welcomes the audience to the humble stadium. Then he introduces the names, positions, and numbers of the blue boys from Swakompound. Today is the way team as they run onto the field. Several scattered boos match the cheer from those dedicated fans who've come to see the match. Neither equal the roar the African stars receive as they make their own entrance. The referee blows their whistles and the game begins. The crowd cheers, chants, and sings. They praise good passes by their own team and hurl insults at the other. The natives battling out on the pitch aren't professionals, only enthusiasts. But the determination they show with every sprinting kick, some German thought it was as good as any star in Europe's premier leagues with a little coaching. At the 15 minute mark, a blue boy's forward kick kicks the balls into the Stars' goal and gives his team the 1-0 lead. Most of the officers groan at the bets they lost. Weren't the Stars today's favorites? But some grin pleased despite their lightened wallets. Native football is becoming increasingly popular with Windhoek, and so is placing bets on the teams who play it. In good times, the managers themselves think the informal money it'll make uh, will give rise to a formal football league for all of South Africa. Who knows? Maybe then the promising natives can show the teachers a thing or two on the pitch. We have begun something truly fantastic here. And a pit stop model. As of now, planes undergo a lengthy and elaborate refueling ritual before they can take off again. We could drastically cut the time they spend on the ground by implementing better fueling technology, ones that will enable larger quantities of aviation gas pumped per unit of time. We can even take this approach one extra step by employing a pit stop approach, whereby the refueling crews will already be in place as soon as the airplanes land. A system like this will guarantee the plane is already ready to depart the moment it completes resupply. Heavier investments are given for these ends as are complaints to the ministry's accountants. Can't they see these expenses are life and death matters for the Afrikaner Lufafa? Improving how fast we get planes back in the sky will lower our expenses. Great! And better air range. Um, as you can see, we are improving civilian spending just because I need more PP here. So, it is what it is. Um, let's let time go on because I want more civvies. Wait. Oh, prioritize better cargo. cargo. Look at that. Germany would be greatly displeased. Uh, by prioritizing Mueller's cargo, most, mostly lucrative goods produced by Central Africa's corporations, he'll give us a share of its profits, which will help us greatly with our economic plans. Of course, the fact that we're ignoring the high match request to take their supplies and bombs in our planes will have consequences, so we should expect backlash in some form. That's, that's too much. That's too much. Redirect unemployment flights. Mm. By prioritizing our air traffic to luxury flights or the private airplanes of the wealthy few who can pay a priority fee, we'll increase our income by a nice amount. Is it a racket? Perhaps. Will the rack be angry? Most likely. Will this bring us lots of money? Sure as heck. Mm. Slightly displeased. Slightly displeased. Slight well, then, what's the point then? If we get $3 million from this and they'll be displeased, why not do the same thing to get $3 million and they'll be slightly displeased? They're so displeased. Which now, this looks... Ooh, that is not good. Ooh, baby boy, that's not good. Um, but we'll do this anyway, so... Slightly pleased. So maybe we should do this one more time before we do anything else up here. Because they do cost us a lot of money, which is not very good, so... And this one does... for better planes, that's okay. And gold and mines? Ooh, uh, air empire. Begin As we begin building up the mines and infrastructure, we'll get a bonus for resource gain. Okay? And gold and fueling stations. We get a bonus for maximum fuel and fuel gain. The repair yards. Production cap and growth. 
And I'll get more civvies. Then go and repair yards. A large air fleet needs an equally sizable ground crew to maintain them. Fortunately, our technicians have accumulated a large amount of experience taking care of so many airplanes for such a long time. So much so that even half a team of our ground personnel can outperform multiple teams from the other air forces in the same tasks. We can use some of our experienced repair yards to make some money off of old planes we no longer need, either bringing them back to an unacceptable shape for the resale, or selling the components of spare parts. Either way, we'll be able to boost our income and build a strong economy. Great. Ah, oh, good job, Nixon. Good job. I could cut military spending, but we... Uh, actually, that does cost us quite a bit. But I don't want to cut it because that hurts our uh, ability to produce guns and equipment and stuff. And I, we got to be ready for the war against South Africa. So that's not good. We need more money. We definitely need more money. Um, If we have to. I mean, I will do it. Each collection period. That's not good. If we go below 4.4 million right now, then I'll, then I'll do something else. So... Um, I want to keep building us up here, but this is going to keep costing us more money, which is not good. I guess I'll go and read the next one, though. Build quickly. Oh, look at that. Nice. It's, uh, Mongolian Civil War. It is evident that with our weak industrial base, we cannot hope to outproduce a large opponent. However, this does not mean that we have no way of maintaining our air supremacy over Deutsch Africa. We can improve the machine tools of our production plants, which use and teach managers and personnel better work practices. The increase in productivity uh, these reforms will bring translate to an ample rate of, rate of fighters, and bombers fill in the gaps in a squadron war will inevitably cause. Of course, should our losses exceed our worst predictions, we can only pray for deliverance. We need more money. There we go, don't we? So displeased, and then we'll spend some more stuff down here so we can not be so displeased. So we did that for steel, which looks a little better now. Which does look a little better, which I do like. Um... We need more melees. We really do. We need we need motorized and tanks and other stuff too. But rubber, but aluminum. We we need so much aluminum. Holy crap! We really do need a lot of aluminum. Nice, good. Build quickly. Follow it up with use scraps. Oh yes, please. In order to maximize production and minimize cost, we shall use whatever scraps and spare parts we can find. Such a drastic action will lower the quality of our aircraft and may result in increased accidents and maintenance costs. Conversely, said accidents may convince Germany the need for additional fundings to rectify unexpected complications in our line of duty. We believe being able to fulfill present necessities are worth the blowback this action causes. Rex Thomas R. Schenk has already filed requests for more money in anticipation of the predictable increase in costs. Hopefully they're going. I just realized I spent more money that way. That's not good. So we need to spend we need more money. Oh boy. I'd love to do this stuff, but we cannot no longer do this for now. So. All right. Things are falling apart. So what happens if we run out of money? Well, at least we got this. Greatly displeased. Five million dollars. No, I'm gonna do that one. Someone displeased still. Five. Okay, that's okay. Um. That's not good. Use the scraps, though. How do we lower the cost of sending money to them? A moment away from evil eye. The small village within the forest hides far away from civilized world's worries. Its soil never felt a taxman's boot, not even when the Portuguese claimed it as theirs. The planes that knew flew overhead were merely strange birds to those people who had lived in a peaceful, simple, never-ending cycle of small things for centuries, that is, until the man in black came. Everyone had fled the first time one strange bird landed on the clearing outside. They had feared demons or monsters after a man sprung out of its sides, the wise village elder merely said before ushering everyone to their huts this, that, that he is no demon. True demons circle around him, unseen by our own eyes. Since then, the man has frequently, frequented the clearing, once around every moon or two or so. The village people quickly learned not to fear his visits, for every time and without fail, he always stayed near their trees. There they heard him cry, bawl, and scream. His tongue spoke harsh gurgles I can't understand, but, that was pain. but the pain in his words, he needed no interpreter. Today, the man in black hobbles to a tree, with a longer frown than the last, and he slams his forehead against the bark as he sobs. A child breaks free from his mother's embrace to amble towards him. Too terrified to move, she can only watch her baby tug on the man's trousers, rousing his attention from his bloody assault. Blood red eyes leak more tears as they lock with a baby's big, soulful gaze. A trembling hand digs briefly in a coat pocket before its owner flees again. When the child returns, he carries with him a small metal box, decorated with pictures of fruits and containing small, colorful balls. Before his mother can stop him, the child pops one ball into his mouth. Her terror morphs into question, then into a happy smile as her baby laughs his first word. Sweet. <laughs> Scale of production, sell our stock. Oh, that's, that'll be good. Scale of production. To appease the ministry, we should resort to conventional methods of increasing our aircraft production. We will still ask them for procurement money, but the costs are easier to justify to Germany's bean counters. In any event, we'll have to prepare for the expected backlash from the inspectors. A tour of our new factories will surely placate any protests which they might have. Der Sturmberger, how does the engine look? Ah, oh, beat. 
All readings look good on my end. Copy that. Keep an eye out on the heat. Old bird's not built for an engine this powerful, and I'm not sure the new cooling system is up to task. Will do. Am I clear for takeoff? The tower side, I guess. It's now or never. You're clear. Among the last few joys in Wolfgang Schenk's life is performing feats of aerial daring with his beautiful planes. While his position as Rex Commissar has mostly put an end to his more outlandish maneuvers, living vicariously through his more foolhardy pilots remain a frequent option. Like today, where he has left his office for the airstrip, where a young pilot and his technician have refitted a surplus Messerschmitt 262 with a new engine. Ambitious, the young man aspired to break the Schwalbe's standing speed record of 900 kilometers per hour. Sensible Rex Commissar will put an end to this potentially disastrous chicanery, maybe hand the culprits to a tribunal for property damage and tomfoolery. Wolfgang Schenk watches eagerly from the hangar as the two men run down one last systems check over the radio. The air behind the engine's exhaust wavers against the heat as its lively whine grows from sullen to eardrum bursting loud, and just as fast the 626 or 262 lurches into motion, streaking down the runway before rising to the skies above it. Look, look, where it belongs, 650 kilometers per hour, 700, 750, 800, I've hit 800. Both ignition and Rex Commissar stare mirthfully as the old jet soars through the air faster than most Schwalbe cannons should. For just a brief moment in the old pilot eyes, Shanks saw himself in the cockpit, up in the skies, flying away from all that misery, shackling him to sweet West Africa sands, flying so fast no one can ever catch him. Why must I always return? He sounds really depressed. Oh, poor Wolfgang. Poor, poor Wolfgang. Honestly, doing nothing here probably is a better bet, just because, uh... Huh, they're very displeased, that's not good. That's really not good. Well, we have a little bit of money, but how is it supposed to get more money that way? Oh, there's a lot of lag, and I want to woo these guys, we'll be slightly pleased. Honestly, if they're going to be slightly pleased, and this is going to cost us any more. Can we even build... Oh, yeah, we're kind of building... I want to get more stuff here, but more savings might be really good to build, so we can build, 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 build. You know what, we'll probably do that one next. Let's get even more savings. I mean, yeah, it helps with the deficit, but the deficit really doesn't matter, honestly. So, hey, we're positive. We're going to be positive on everything here as time goes on. So, prioritize better cargo. No, use a scrap. That's good. Get no more money for now. It's fine. Woo th these guys. They're so displeased. We really can't displease them too much more. Oh, boy, that's not good. Rex Commissar Siegfried's Mueller's informal invitation. To the scene, Rex Commissar Sud West Africa, Wolfgang Schenk. So far, the great fatherland, it is rare to be able to appreciate the company of Germany's greatest heroes such as yourself. I would humbly request your presence to an upcoming hunt of my great beast of this dark continent. The help of a flying ace such as yours, self, would make it easier to navigate the vast expanse of the Congolese interior. It is my humble belief that such an expedition would be a great opportunity to further develop the ties between the two joint missions to further the glory of the Aryan race in these mysterious lands. The rest of the letter contained an in-depth plan of the expedition with information on the type of game found in the region. Miller's analysis of weapons suitable for the hunt and a brief antidote about a previous hunt in the area. Our ex commissar Schenk recognized Mueller's rambling, stream of consciousness style of conversation. An impressive achievement as it was in this literary form. The ex commissar was more concerned with the invitation itself than how it would unfold. A trip with Mueller might be a nice break from his duties in Sufis, Africa, yet the jovial commissar of the Congo would be strange at times, and there was no telling what the expedition might entail in the end. He looks so happy. So happy. Next time, perhaps, Ari? Let's go and hunt! Why would we do turn him down? Why would we not why would we do that? Ah, it's still our stock. Now that our production rates skyrocketed to comfortable levels, now we can try to sell our planes to the highest bidder. With a few well-placed disappearances in accounting books and several falsified maintenance reports, we can put our planes in the black market. Surely, there are African states willing to buy planes even from their hated enemies. The average age of our eventual in inventories probably dates back to the Wright brothers anyway. Hardly a threat we should prepare against. We have to be careful, however. The more planes we sell, the likelier our overlord learns of our shady dealings. Many of the positions are at high risk of, suddenly, of sudden vacancies, should the truth come to light. Literally the only way to get PP is by spending more money here. Literally the only way. Uh, redirect unimportant flights. kind of want to do that one, though. But they're very displeased already. Jesus Christ, that's so bad. Yeah, we need, we, we need more money. Jesus. We get a million more dollars, but we do get two military factors, which would be good for the transport plants, which we can use for whatever we need, as well as motorized. And then we'll get some tanks. That might... Of industry. The ride of the airport I had always been long and boring for Valdemar every day, meant passing by the same trees and planes and shrubs from yesterday. But for the dirt road bumps and swerves and the god awful rumbling of the dilapidated bus's engines, he would have fallen asleep from the monotony. For all the improvements he'd seen from the Germans, public transportation was not one of them. No, they made improvements in other places, like in the landscape Valdemar had stared 
enraptured, enraptured from the cracked window for the past few weeks. What was once a small plaza forest now bristled with industry and construction. Trees of concrete pl replaced trees of wood, while machinery, the likes of which you never seen flat in the clearing and dug formations or foundations out of it day after day. Smoke now billowed from the tall chimney stacks as trucks lined the pristine uh, Macadam Road with materials to and from the new manufacturing complex. Everyone had felt these new changes, even the locals, Valdemar, uh, himself, astounded how much more food he could buy with his wages now that prices had dropped. He wrung his wristwatch with a smile, a cheap trinket with a timekeeper so small he can barely keep time with it, but it was a wristwatch nonetheless. As the bus went uh, past the new industrial quarter, Valdemar's eyes honed in onto its most bewildering future, small practical cabins for the homeless Angolans. No doubt made of the force that had once stood here, in truth he can't wrap his head around how their house and wise. Angolan timber was valuable, so why waste it on people like him, slaves in all but name? This shink everyone was talking about, why was he so interested in looking out after them? The young Angolan knew there was something more to it in the end, he probably will never know. The best he can do is enjoy the fruits of this strange thing he had never known, prosperity. Hey, it's got a nice ring to it. Prior to his better cargo... Um, where are we at now? Oh, that's really bad. Holy crap. Um, pack the runways would be nice. Germany would be just displeased by this. And they get some of our planes, too. We get $4 million, though. Redirect unemployment flights. Ooh. Is that it? Hmm. That is not ideal. And industrial magnets get three million dollars, five percent for increase for production efficiency, cap and growth, diamond in the rough, more construction speed, and cap. Why not? The situation in Germany is quickly deteriorating. They are becoming increasingly worried about our actions. In order to soothe their doubts, we'll incite or invite several of the prominent industrialists to set up shop in Sweet West Africa with a promise of favorable deals and contracts in the future. At the same time, we'll use them as a, a way to lobby our causes to the Minister for Colonial Affairs. With the cover of powerful magnates, we'll be able to secure our position, if not definitively definitively, then at least for some time, which we get the money, which is really good. And we're going to need that construction speed too, so. The markets of Cape Longo. The sun has been above the horizon for an hour. Already the streets of Cape Longo bustle with people. Since yesterday, caravans of wagons, carts, even a salvage truck here and there have streamed into town square for Cape Longo's twice monthly market. This is, there is a good day meant easy living. A bad day meant two weeks of hunger. Bundles of bananas and ma maize, even luxuries like coffee are unloaded at stalls lined in the central court. Local crafts such as handwoven baskets and jewelry are sold alongside fantasy flashlights from foreign places. Pistols and bullets lay on racks at arms dealer Andacon's usual spot, but the old man earned more of his keep repairing the old unused rifles of Cape Longo's guard. Crowds gather, stalls open. Yet no sales are made amidst the square's eerie silence. Instead, everyone raises their heads towards the horizon, waiting for the signal. A faint rumble coming from the north, more vibrations and sound at first. The little grumbling once brought fear to Cape Longo, but now it brought anticipation. The rumble grows into thunder and into a deafening roar. In most days, scattered clouds obscure these rumbles from the people below, but today the sky wears clear, bright blue. Chatter runs throughout the crowd, and fingers jab upwards. There, mere pinpricks against the blue sky, but unmistakably there. Fly a dozen black spots southward. No one knows what these thunderous birds are or why they make their heavily, heavenly flights north every evening, and southwards return every morning. Since their appearance, however, it has become a tradition not to begin a day's work until they've rumbled their pass. The market holds its breath while thunders fly overhead and into a gathering of clouds. As black melds with white, the rumble fades and silence returns. Cape Longo turns its attention back to the earth and to each other. Now, the haggling begins. There's business to be done, my friends. Lots and lots of business. Um, we need that money, so I don't care. Sail load fighters, look at that. Our fellow Rajkumasas in Africa have expressed interest in purchasing some of our older planes. Finalizing the transaction will take some time, but estimate 3 million US dollars for 30 planes. A lower price than they're worth, but necessary given the nature of our dealings. Germany will be not, will be slightly, will be slightly pleased. Okay, yeah, why not? Oh, we need interceptors then. Basic jet interceptors. Oh, jet, improved jet technical bombers, and let's get basic jet interceptors. Because I've already, like, got rid of them. Um, early started basic jet transports, uh, improved jet transports, of course. Mm, improved jet tactical bombers, and what was the other one? The interceptors, right? Uh, Pre-war fighters, fighters cast, transports early, interceptors. Do we not have basic jet interceptors? Improved. Oh, let's at least get this one first. Uh, don't show this. So maybe we can make them eventually. That'd be really good for money, actually. Basic jet. Basic, basic. Intercept earlies. Do we not have? We might not. Oh, there they are. Cool. Um, 
where is it? I don't want to see that marking here. My apologies about this. Um, there it is. There you go. Cool. And actually, since we're here, I do want more civvies. I want to be pleased. I want to be able to actually build up. Ugh, only one though. Hmm. Well, crud. Hmm. This is cheaper. It would still cost a lot of money, though. Yeah, hmm. Oh, we need more rubber, too, to even make the planes. We need aluminum as well. Civvy, so I can we can build. Uh, I'll go with the civvy. I like civvy too much. Seventy-three million, not bad. I mean, the desktop doesn't really matter. We got one more basically to use. Oh, uh, it sucks. I don't know if we'll actually be able to get that one down, but whatever. All right, let's do this one too. Three more million dollars, that'll be good. Um, up next, Italy wins the Turkish war. Fuel quickly. Skim off the top. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Dig quickly. Bounty of Africa. So excavated gold and diamonds of Germany. The industry, fuel industry. Um, construction speed. I like that. Even more construction speed. Sell even more oil. Uh, let's go with the end goal and fueling stations. We need to improve and update the infrastructure that our growing air fleet needs. Two key parts there are of, of course, refueling stations and oil refineries. To ensure we have enough fuel, we'll not only build better storages, but also invest in synthetic fuel production. The Reich's Commissar has already prepared an official request for more funding, accompanied with perfectly plausible plans and graphics. The Ministry does love its graphics. And you get another fuel uh, synthetic refinery, which is pretty good. Um, actually, how many planes do we have? We should have... I, I didn't even look at this yet. Oh, yes, good. Let's keep working... Oh, on everything. Yeah, let's grab that. Two. Keep going with the land auction, because this is what it started off with us as, and I didn't really want to change it. Um, more soft stack would be really good. Ooh, let's grab that anyways, too. They're very displeased. That's so bad. How, how, how bad can it get? How bad can it really get? Probably really bad, actually. Uh, it's always a struggle here. Always a struggle. Budget-wise, 72 billion, million, that's fine. <clears throat> Fuel quickly. With our new stations now active, we can start improving all refueling procedures. With better trained technicians and advanced equipment, our planes can take off much faster than quicker, both improving their performance and reducing their vulnerability during such important phases. These will undoubtedly cost, unsurprisingly cost a hefty sum. One which we lack at the moment, hence the high will have to step in as always. We protect more complaints over such expenses, but they ultimately need us far more than we need them. The Diamond in the Rough. <clears throat> Wolfgang Schenk stands lost in the large dining room. His ceremonial garbs are now well kept and well fitted. His metal lines his chest in one eat row. One seems to stab his chest, a dead man dangling from his uniform, exposing his filth for everyone to see. He isn't used to the luxury and fine dinners, but it probably never will be. Schenk is a soldier at heart, but more Germanly. He is a sinner. Abstinence makes him feel some atonement for his crimes. Shaking dreadful thoughts off his head, Shank smiles at the businessman whose blatant attempts at bribery he has tried to ignore. He assures the man that Sudvest Africa's recent industrial developments are only the beginning, and additional investments will surely return tenfold the principles in time. You are doing the right thing by investing in Sudvest Africa, he says, sincerely to the core pursuit, though the true meaning of his words are completely different. If he only knew what the right thing Shank intended to do with all those Reichsmarks truly was, he wouldn't be so eager to drown him in money. Despite his discomfort, the Schenk was grateful for the invitation to his social dinner at Vinhook's best and only high-class restaurant, and for what it means. Through his efforts, Angola now possesses a sizable industrial base, sizable in African standards at best, bringing not only more prosperity for the natives employed as paid, if underpaid workers rather than slaves, but more attention from investors now willing to pay for a part in what many in Germany have dubbed Africa's diamond in the rough. Schenk picks a canapé from the tray the server almost shovels into his mouth. He pops one, just one this time, into just this once, into his mouth. A small reward for his efforts. Just this one, though. Because we get stability, war support, political power. How bad can we get this? With, their, with them being very displeased, um, high German displeasure. Can he go very high? I'm going to say this real quick. I want to see if we can really piss off the people in Germany, get as much money as we can from them, and then do that. <clears throat> so, we currently have high German displeasure. How high can we go? I'd love to do this stuff, but... Better cargo? They'll be greatly displeased, which sucks. Um, but we don't want that $5 million. If it's very... Hi, hi. I mean, they're still very displeased. So, but we still have enough money for now, and we do have some of this, so we can help them out too. Um, if we can sell this stuff, that's not bad. We need military factories. We're gonna need rubber. We're gonna need a lot of aluminum as well. So, let's do aluminum first, and then 
Let's please them getting another military factory, which I normally don't do. Do we need more rubber? We still need more rubber to actually produce those planes, so that's okay. And this is hopefully pleasing Germany a lot. Hopefully? And steel to produce stuff. I'm going to save our PP. Let's save the rest of the PP for now. They're still very displeased, but you know, it is what it is. Whatever. <clears throat> we'll have to deal with it. And then we will refill quickly. So how are we doing here? 99 uh, million? That's fine. Not me. The children's play. It was the 20th day of the German youth. From the Volga to Burgundy, the Denmark to Luderitzbusch. Children of the Reich Ove celebrated the heritage and their predecessor sacrifices. The German children of Vinhook were just as eager to show their patriotism as any other in the mother country. First, a candlelight parade. Hitler Junge marched with its lit candles down the streets to the town center. The spectating parents moved over the procession's homages, the fallen of the first Belt Creek, stabbed in the back by progressives and the bourgeois, who all stood idly by while the British ships ripped Sudwest Africa from Germania's grasp. The fallen of the Munich Putsch, and those who died at the hands of Spartacists and the Weimar. The sacrifice of B Germany's deliverance, and through the sacrifice of many Germans more, this deliverance was made utterly permanent. Then came the play that Hitler Jünger performed sh uh, Schlaggetter underneath the Reiterdenkmal, a statue of a German soldier commemorating those who lost in the Herero and Namakwa War. The play was a story of Albert Schlagetter, the man who stood up as a Third Reich so first soldier and fought a hidden war against the Ruhr's unjust occupation by the French. Its message resonated within those who recalled the mandate years, drawing tears from several old couples as the curtains drew to an applauded close. But the natives who watched it brought home an entirely different take. Those, these colonialists, who had the gall to weep over the memory of their own occupation under the mon monument to the conquest and genocide of the native tribes. They drew their own parallels to Schlageta, derailing trains in the Svalvlo, uh, rebels taking shots at colonial police. All art is subjective. The Germans celebrated the play as a shining example of the culture. The natives took away the play's most famous line instead. Whenever someone says the word culture, I reach for my gun. Cool. And we've got about six days left. How are we doing? Oh, zero. So, getting the cities doesn't even mean anything, then. At this point, it means, like, nothing. But we could keep getting, getting more, though, but pleasing them. Infrastructure. Steel. Oh, steel. Eh, we need more steel, definitely. But when... The needs for steel. Uh, we have... We need steel for this, too. We're gonna need steel for this. Not so much for this, though. We need more military factories. Let's grab some more military factories first. Hey, did you know that these improved jet transports to hold 72 passengers? That's kinda cool. Ah. All right, 3.2 million, so slightly displeased. That's fine with us. Get more money, then. For the love of God, get more money. Cool. And this stuff just seems like blueprints. Transport planes. Oh, this would cost us $2 million. Oh, there's... Why would I do this, then? It was going to cost us this much money. Build up a bomber and fighter fleet? Yeah, there's... No thanks. A bit off the top, yes. Since fuel for the airplanes is a strategic need for the mainland, perhaps we could increase our needs a bit. Selling some fuel to the natives and claiming it never arrived and requesting more money to offset our losses, it sounds like a very good idea. Though we are ardently hope Germania's inspectors are more preoccupied with worse problems, such as the Reich's slow, inexorable collapse. They care about a few million rice marks wasted in fuel, of course. Um, so they're very displaced, so whatever. Uh, oh, I don't want that one so badly, but rubber. Uh, aluminum. Oh, we can still sell more old fighters. 30 basic jet fighters, which were actually... Oh, 30 basic jet fighters. Ooh. Hmm. Basic jet fighters. These will probably be pretty easy to produce then, right? If that's the case, let's lower this by one then. Let's produce some of these guys, because they're easier to make than what we currently have, right? So, we might as well make them so we can make some money off them, right? Seven, a few every year. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, infrastructure, civvies. I mean, they'll be slightly pleased. At this point, does it really matter? They're even displeased at all. And it's going to cost us more money to do this stuff anyway, so... Uh, ah, it's always a game. I don't want to... Oh, oh, that's... Oh, actually. By doing that, we spent the money with the political power. We actually might be able to produce it before the war breaks out, actually. Maybe. Maybe. Eh, probably not, actually. Keep boosting up so we need to get more PP. Cool. Fuel quickly. Oh, if that's the case, um, screw it. We'll do this anyways. The extreme. Oh, okay. So we can go to extremely displeased. That's not good. Well, at least we know. Well, they're extremely displeased. Well, that's going to be like that the entire time. We still have two here. Eh, whatever. I know, I'm screwing this up a whole bunch, but I just want to make sure that we don't die before uh, <laughs> the war starts here. So, all right. And then, alternative. 
options. It's evident that we don't have enough fuel for the Luf Afrikaner Luftwaffe. While oil imports can plug the hole for a bit, we'll soon need much more than we can produce. To address this issue, we shall build new refineries and commit more resources to synthetic oil research. Germania may move away from mere complaints to warning us at warnings at this point. They probably will still send us our money, though, with more suspicion than ever they want to do with it. We're building a slot. Synthetic refineries, cool. Mm, more district support. We definitely need those millies. We're not really producing that many of these things, though. Or we could we really need those millies. Yeah. At least get more main battle tanks, so. There you go. Whoa. Hello. Hello, Brittany. Thanks for uh, investing in us, I guess. I don't care about that for now. Uh, skim fuel. Oh, look at that. Yes. Slightly displeased. Get, well, if we skim fuel, <clears throat> we can skim some fuel from the supply cargoes and sell it to the private market for an ample sum. Of course, Germania will eventually notice the inconsistencies in her numbers, but... <clears throat> but then, we'll be wealthy enough to cover our tracks, at least, it, that's a hope. There's no point in doing that, then. Let's give lots of fuel. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we need more fuel, realistically, but... They're already extremely displeased, so... Redirect unemployment flights? I guess we'll do that one. Why not? I just want to make sure we got enough money to pay them off, so... <clears throat> Expand the silos. Our fuel silos are utterly inadequate for maintaining an adequate stockpile of aviation gas for our large air force, at least. That's our excuse for building several new fuel silos at roughly twice the normal price. Even though we'll probably get the money, we should still expect a reaction from the irate ministry, more complaints from bureaucrats, stern letter warnings, or even a full investigation. Get two more fuel, fuel silos? Sell our oil surplus will be unlocked? That's probably not going to do, I'll be honest. Um, yeah. 131 million, so be it, so be it. I mean, our GDP is growing faster anyway, so... And we probably don't have any cities to really build with, which really does suck. Oh, actually, we have some. Huh. But happy 1963, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Alright. Expand the silos. Nothing bad will happen this year at all. Never anything bad. Exploit it all. Our need for fuel has grown beyond sustainable levels, which means we'll have to exploit all available sources of oil and synthetic, synthetic fuel, no matter the cost. Moreover, the Reich will surely contribute to such a worthy cause. On a more serious note, we must be careful. The more our expenses rise, the more we are at risk of being questioned for, God forbid, discovered. More maximum fuel and fuel gain, 5%. A little more money. More oil, that's an Angolan oil rush, yes please. Oil, yum yum. They'll be extremely displeased, but you know what? They already are, so I don't care. Uh, that's okay, and what do we need here? Oh, there goes Madagascar. Um, aluminum, basically everything. Just basically everything again. I want more civvies, though. Slightly, please. Yeah, I mean, I would like that, but at this point, three is not great. It's not bad. And eh, we'll do it one more time, why not? There you go. And what are we looking? Three? Four? Hey, we got up to four. Do we actually make something here? Huh. Out of the crash. Cool. And exploit of the Africa Miracle. Germany has been observing our progress with great pleasure. Is now ready to make a giant investment in Iraq from Oh, that's kind of cool. Huh. Exploit it all. I'll do everything else here. I still want to sell some fuel. I guess the money, I like that. Sell lots of fuel. We really don't have a lot of fuel, man. What if? That's a lot of fuel. That is a ton of fuel. That's a lot of money, though, we could really use. Wait, do we really need to use it for now? Well, three million. Maybe just a little bit, maybe. Current fuel. What if we imported some more fuel? <laughs> we import some fuel using the cities we have, so we can sell the fuel to get more money. Daily gains 504, so maybe that's not too bad. Explode it all in the Angolan mines. In order to keep up with both the high mass demands and conceal our illegal activities, we must appear as well managed and autonomous resource wise. As such, we have shown increased mining operations in our Angolan core lands, with special regard to aluminum and other materials needed to build airspaces or air airplanes. By letting the Reich know we are striving to cater to their every demand, we'll decrease their suspicions about our conduct. Additionally, we will also lessen our reliance on raw materials and ports, while simultaneously increasing how much the Reich's commissariat exports. Truly, two birds with one stone. We get the air empire, but as we begin building up the mines and infrastructure, we'll gain a bonus for resources gain. More infrastructure is great. Love it. Um, now we have seventy thousand. We can get rid of some of skim fuel. Yeah, I don't want to skim it. Actually, we can just do this. Actually, you know what? You know what? It doesn't really matter, does it? They're extremely displeased with us, anyways, right? Just give us the fuel. Give us your fuel, and we're gonna sell it immediately. <laughs> Gave us six million more dollars. <laughs> All right, I love it. I love it. 
I want to sell some old fighters too, but that angle and oil rush. Most have considered the first oil wells another of Shanks' pet projects at first. The Ministry of Colonial Affairs was well aware of uh, his desire to improve the conditions of Angola's populace, but what did a few thousand liberated slaves matter in the larger picture? So long as Sudwest Africa paid its dues to the Reich and cared for its own beloved planes, Germania had left the aviator to his own devices? Now they are, perhaps, reassessing their beliefs as the first reports of what has been dubbed the Angolan oil rush. Land of both their desks and shanks. The expressions likely can't be any more different. Germania's bureaucrats, the Rex Commissar's Im imagines, or imagines, sport a bewilderment at the number of zeros in his balance sheet reports. <clears throat> Conversely, his wear rare satisfaction as he read his copy. This has been his biggest bet after all. By making Angola so sufficient in oil production, he can not only supply his beloved planes, but also kickstart power production plants to supply his colony colonies settlements with electricity. Quality of life wasn't the only improvement, however. With more lasting supply of electricity, the power outages that had plagued his factories been all but disappeared. Productivity had skyrocketed, as his discontent plummeted from natives getting access to services such as heating and light for the first time. Investors are flocking to Sudwest Africa to get a share of the oil pie, and Wolfgang is more than happy to accept their money. Everyone is welcomed to join him in making Angola a better place to live. If only they knew they won't get a single Rexmock back, he muses, chuckling. What surprised him? When he has he last let out a sincere laugh? Maybe now his sufferings are truly nearing their end. I truly hope so. Now back to work. Now we can do that. And I do want to build more, 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 but we still need to do stuff here too as well, so. Ooh, where are we at for Millie's? Because right now we've got... We have 30, which is slowly improving. How many more millies do we need? That's a bank question. Improved? Uh, realistically, we might not be able to do this. I'd rather, honestly, invest in getting those these ones done first. So maybe go up to three. If the more we can sell, the better it would be. Germany would be slightly pleased with that as well. Oh, so we need basic jet fighters. Wait. Oh, so we'll need 30 to send each one. We're not currently utilizing the market. If that's the case, let's get some industrial support first. And then... How many more resources do we really need? More. Just just more. You know what, screw it. I'm going to do this one first, too. It's going to cost a little bit more, but... Hey, up to 6 out of 20? When we're at war, we'll hopefully do as well here with that. And let's grab some... Steel? Aluminum? Rubber? I'll grab some more aluminum. And some rubber. Why not? Screw it. Why not? Hey, and now we can sell some old fighters. Great. We have $7 million. We're improving ourselves quite a bit. I love it. And so now we have 60000 Not as good yet to do this. Uh, $3 million. $3 million. Germany will be slightly pleased. Germany will not be pleased here at all. They're still extremely displeased with us, so... We'll do this one first, why not? Now we're 50,000, 50, right? Oh, when, when it leaves, but... Dig quickly. Our budget languishes as we take plenty of money for our side businesses, very few of which remain for fulfilling our official obligations. Thus, we shall increase how much we sell by improving how much we extract from our mines. This way, we'll, our overlord will be happy, securing us our vital lifeline and funds. Of course, we will still need to justify why our increased activities aren't bringing any actual revenue to the Reich's alien coffers, which may prove slightly more difficult over time, but hey, you know, that's for a later time, of course. Um, let's get some more land united tech, because I have a feeling the war is going to break out eventually, someday. Someday, there will be a war. When we have, like, no divisions. Like, eight divisions, is that it? Von Leipzig. <laughs> ah, bodies on the bridge. Three were found on the Katumbella River Bridge, with an additional two underneath. <clears throat> Discovered after an extensive search. Number of fingers were severed. Bayonets were likely used. Believe that the mandibles were torn out before death. Believe that the mandibles were torn out before death, and likely the work of a nearby guerrilla organization under surveillance by the city garrison. Jinx palms slams against the Manila folder once, twice, three times. A group of settlers, just some shopkeepers and clerks, found butchered in Katumbella. Katumbella. It wasn't the first time the city's name had come across a desk. His officers sent a shipment of arms there just last month for classified recipients. A truck full of rifles, bullets, grenades, even some well-made German knives, all part of the constant game that every Rex Commissar had to play with their new territories, inevitable resistance groups, and now, now, he can't take this, his gut rolling, his hot pounding, Shank storms out of his office. Out of the building, he hastens to the nearest staff car and strikes a fist against the hood, star startling its young chauffeur airship. Now, I must clear my head. Extremely displeased still, but whatever. Let's give him some fuel. Mm. Slightly displeased, $3 million. Greatly displeased, $5 million. Uh. We do get more fuel, and we can sell it back to get more money, too. We're doing really well in fuel with doing what we're doing here. Um, let's do that one. Yeah, why not? Uncle Jose's cabin, or life among the lowly. 
In the outskirts of Vinhook is a large mansion, its neoclassical facade painted in white, clean white, and sustained by tall sun col columns. The leaned observer, or learned observer, wouldn't miss a striking resemblance to the American South's antebellum mansions, and the owners would probably agree after all. Great minds think alike, but where vast cotton fields garlanded the exteriors of Southern Knights' abodes, this mansion has carried a large ugly hole from which emerges the Earth's wealth bound for Vinhook and Leopoldville. It's still the hundreds of black slaves toiling to death under the sun, of course, some things never change regardless of century. Like ancient Romans attending a gladiatorial game in the Colosseum, as German owners enjoyed lunch in a garden overlooking the mine. As the servants bring their meals, one of the mine slaves trips, spilling his oars under the ground. A guard speeds to his side, kicking the slave at the kidneys. He crumples into a yow yowling heap, thereafter receiving a well-deserved whipping that lasts until the wretch has collected everything. With blood dripping from his back and arms, the inferior resumes his duty. Gunther, my dear, did you see that? Truly a shame, says a middle-aged woman. Yes, Margaret. This is a disgrace, echoes a man, likely her husband. Such laziness and lack of skill is becoming of our, of our workforce. Accidents like this has increased despite our employees' commendable Efforts. Tis all Shank's fault, I'm sure, continues the respectable lady. The say has been restless ever since he advertised his little projects. Escapees have all but tripled. And some have even gathered the gall to ask for better conditions they're owed. I know, my love, Gunter assuages. Wouldn't have dealt with these in Ost Africa. Herr Hutig knows how to treat the inferiors better than Shank. Indeed, Hutig would have known what to do with the lessers who believe themselves are equals, as if Jews, Negroes, communists. You know one, you know all. The man nodded to his wife, and the conversation ended as a service brought today's dessert. Bring me some water. My god, they are so lazy. So lazy. And we shall conclude today's episode after we did quickly. Very cool. Very nice. And uh, we can do fuel of industry, which seems okay, but. I mean, and the military factory would be nice, but. I kind of want to do the Bounty of Africa to see what happens. The Bounty of Africa, with our need for money greater than ever, we've found interesting ways to increase our profits. Though in less quantities than our cousins in Central Africa, Sudwest Africa possesses both gold and diamond veins awaiting exploitation. Selling such precious resources into the world market will fill the coffers faster than otherwise. If we so decide, we can concentrate our efforts on this very lucrative endeavor, greatly increasing our revenue at their resource stockpile's expense. The Rock may also press for their share of the golden pie, but if you enjoyed this video, or this you know, you know, first video in the campaign. Please do consider leaving a Sudvest African like. A subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below so far. And I will see you tomorrow as we explore what else Sudvest Africa has in store and maybe a little bit of conflict on the continent. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.